Good morning and happy Friday to you. You know, before we got stuck in this social distancing isolation, we used to always say, thank God it's Friday. Because Friday um, was the end for a lot of us, our work week and we could look forward to the weekend. But I don't know about you, but with every day kind of feeling just about the same, it's kind of like, oh, it's Friday. But I would suggest that maybe we can still go back to, thank God it's Friday. What different can I do with my day today? And that's something I would encourage us all to think about. What's one thing we can do each day to break up the monotony of the day? But that will be a different video. I promised you yesterday that our self-care, improving the quality of your sleep would have a second part to it. And guess what? It's actually gonna have a third part also. But for today, what I wanna talk about is, first of all, I got so many responses with people agreeing that sleep is becoming quite elusive during this time of social distancing and isolation. I think one of the reasons why is because one, as I mentioned earlier, we had the monotony of the day. So a lot of people are taking naps <clears throat> throughout the day because they have nothing else to do. So the first thing I would say to help to improve your sleep quality is stop taking naps. And if you do have to take a nap, make it no longer than about 20 minutes to a half an hour. Do not take those two and three hour naps. I know they make it may make the day go by faster, but it does impact the quality of your sleep at night. So that's our first tip for today. Cut back on those naps and make them shorter. Yesterday I took a nap. It was almost about 20, 25 minutes long, and it was great. I woke up refreshed, but I must admit, initially when I woke up, I was like, hmm, that wasn't much of a nap because I'm used to napping. I'm used to hour and a half, two hour naps when I can get them in. But I realized that 20 minute nap didn't, gave me exactly what I needed. So get rid of the naps and if you can't, make them much shorter. The second thing I wanna talk about today is nutrition. Yes, that awful thing, nutrition. And you may say, look, if I'm gonna be stuck in the house, um, I'm gonna eat what I wanna eat because it's comforting. And food does provide comfort, but food also provides some challenges depending on what we are eating. All I'm gonna suggest is maybe a different way of looking at your meals during this time of being, um, <clears throat> during this time of social distancing and isolation. For a lot of us, we grew up eating breakfast, which may have been relatively a healthy meal or a heavy meal, uh, maybe not so much lunch, and then dinner was like a big meal. What I want to suggest is changing things around to make your bigger meals probably your lunch, your midday meal. When you wake up in the morning, yes, you want breakfast, but you don't want to pack in so many carbohydrates, so many starches that all you want to do is sleep. Because again, those two things are working against your quality sleep at night. The next thing is focus on lunch. Make that your larger meal. Uh, for a lot of us, when we were working or able to get out, lunch would be maybe something fast food. It may be a sandwich. It may be a small salad. And we would save our calories for dinner. I'm suggesting that you switch those meals. For lunch, make it your big meal. Make it something that you would normally eat for dinner. And make sure when you're eating your lunch, make sure that it has nutritional quality to it that you have ideally more vegetables on your plate than you do meat or starches. Now, as I've said to some of you, you may or may not know, I am a vegan or I follow a plant-based diet. And so my challenge during this time is to make sure that I'm getting enough protein. But I suspect for you meat eaters, getting enough protein is not the issue. But try to make sure that you're eating a healthy serving of that protein, that you're not overeating it, and that you're eating more vegetables and more complex carbohydrates. And so to make your lunch your larger meal. 
so that by the time you get to dinner, dinner is a much smaller meal. That may be where you may want to just have a salad or have soup and salad or something not so heavy. Now, I'm not going to tell you what time you should eat dinner or all those kinds of things, but what I will tell you is that the later you eat, the harder it is for your body to digest that food when you're trying to sleep. And so for some of us, that may be what's keeping us awake, is our bodies is trying to digest that food. I made the mistake last night. I ate a good dinner. I ate a healthy dinner at around 7, 7.30, and I was actually good. I was actually satisfied, but this is where the boredom crept in. I was like, oh, I have some potato chips. I love potato chips. So I started snacking on potato chips and found myself snacking on it until much later than what I probably should have. So by the time I went to lay down, my sleep, getting to sleep was kind of unrestful and the sleep was not the quality that I'm used to having. And I realized because I kept snacking on those greasy um, potato chips before going to bed. So I'm not telling you you can't have potato chips. What I am telling you is you may want to focus on eating them a good many hours prior to bedtime. Some of you, before you go to bed, you eat ice cream or you eat cake or whatever it is that you do. I'm simply suggesting that you not do that a couple of hours. That you, if you want to consume it, consume it a couple of hours, maybe at least three hours before you're planning to go to bed. If you find yourself right before bedtime saying, mm, I really want something to eat, drink some water. Recognize that that's simply out of habit and out of boredom, that you're not necessarily hungry. And remember, our goal today is to focus on getting a quality night's sleep. So just to recap, the two suggestions I've made for today is if you are choosing to take naps, Make, allow them to only be 20 minutes to a half an hour and preferably only one nap per day. Because the more you nap during the day, the harder it is to get quality sleep at night. You're napping because you're bored. So challenge yourself to do something else instead of getting in the bed. And if you choose to get in the bed, make it only 20 minutes to a half an hour. And the second thing we mentioned was nutrition to try to make your larger meal of the day lunch and make dinner a smaller meal and to stop snacking maybe three hours before you go to sleep or at least two to give your body time to digest whatever it is you've been snacking on. So with that note, um, I pray that you all have a great night tonight, that you are able to move closer to getting quality sleep on purpose. Love you all and until tomorrow, bye-bye.